First and foremost, do you think it's a good uh, indicator that we've got a rising number of billionaires in this country? Well, it's about it's a bit like uh, um, having a lot of Olympic gold medalists. Yes, there's 177 billionaires. Um, there's 2,700 uh, dollar billionaires on the planet. We should want more of them because billionaires typically are people who have done really well, often locally, providing jobs, boosts to the economy, and we should aspire to be like them. And here's the thing about billionaires anyway. If you say we're going to give you massively high wealth taxes where the money you've paid income tax on and national insurance, uh, your companies have paid tax, now we're going to take what you thought was yours um, and we're going to uh, reduce it over time. These people are economic tourists in reality. They're just going to go away. They're just going to disappear. But is that, just a, anything. is that just the myth that's peddled? Because when people say tax the wealthy more, the wealthy will go, oh, we'll leave, we'll leave, or they'll leave. There. And really, do they leave? Yes. Do they? I, I, I know, I know several billionaires go? that have lived. They go to the, well, some will go to countries just without wealth tax. That's why people used to come to Britain, because there was no wealth tax, and you had the non-non-dom rules. Or you can go to places like Ireland, or you can go to places like Malta, or, or, or the Channel Islands, or, or, or Swiss. But, you can but, go all but kinds that's of that's only some of them. I think that... Uh, if you're like a, a Russian or a Middle Eastern oligarch living here, you will leave, no doubt about it. But a lot of people regard Britain as a very good place to invest in, no matter what. Uh, it's a really good uh, sort of economic site for, for very rich people to make their way in the world. They like the quality of life. And when you talk to people who are internationally uh, in the upper income bracket, they regard Britain as a really, really nice place to hang out in. Used to. I think, I think it still is. I mean, you know, you know rich people don't go to Munich what to do you have call a good a rich time. rich person, I think Frank? They do. I think somebody over uh, 10, 12 million dollars. You have to remember, a billionaire these days is the equivalent to a millionaire in the 1980s, given the inflated uh, values and the value of money is no longer what it was 20, 30 years ago. So a real billion, we don't have the kind of billionaires we used to have in such large numbers. What we have is a lot of people who are like the old millionaires, but they not are able to call themselves billionaires because of the fact that the, of, of the, 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 the value of money has, be, has been really devalued. Yeah, and I think what I find fascinating is about a lot of this conversation, I do feel it is quite a lot of politics of envy. As This was a big piece in The Guardian today, and um, there's been a lot of strategies that have been talked about as to how to take money from the so-called elite, the wealthy, and all the rest of it. But they never really seem to take account of the fact that actually... These people, they employ a great deal of people, so they, they create huge income for a variety of different families. They pay a lot of tax already. Uh, they do kind of have a lot of responsibility for innovation in this country as well. So to me, the kind of positives, if you like, of those people are overlooked often. Look, the simple fact is the headline is for the 177 billionaires. The, the NHS costs $180 billion a year. So what you're going to end up with is... We're not going to, whatever you tax them, we're going to take all their money off them. They've got an average of $2 billion of, of net wealth each. You can't take all their money. If you certainly threaten to do that, they certainly all would go. What actually happens with these taxes um, is that you introduce a tax for the, for the, you know, the, the, the super normal profits or the wealth tax for the, for the super rich, and then it dribbles down until all of us are paying wealth tax. We pay wealth tax anyway in this country, all of us. We pay inheritance tax. The government, when you die, the government takes 40% of your wealth. I don't wealth think you should pay inter inheritance tax. But that's wealth. Inheritance uh, tax should be a thing. But that is a wealth tax. What happens is you pay your taxes, you pay your VAT, you pay your national insurance, you pay your contributions, you pay your corporations tax, and then the money you've got left, you put into a house. And what they want to do is they're going to introduce wealth tax. This is what Corbyn was hinting at. We're going to take 1%, 2 or 3% of that a year mm. if you're worth more than a few. I don't want to live in a country like that. I want to live in an aspirational country where we pay our taxes, yes, the roads and the health service, and we get yeah, on and we all become richer. If you're a billionaire and someone takes an extra 1% off you, which is what one of the proposals is, a 1%, as you say, what's 1% going to do if you're that rich? Well, it's not going to raise an awful lot of money then either, the administration of it, but it also sends a signal. It sends a signal that Britain isn't about making money and rewarding you and being a place where the money you've earned, you've paid tax on, is yours. It says we're taking your money. It's a sleeping charge. It's a very, very, very depressing move for an entrepreneurial country.